Hi folks, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the questions on uh, 276. But once again, this is one of those uh, sections where we need to do the work on it before we answer it. Now, since um, I'm not at school, I'm unable to give you the constellation chart that I would usually give to people, but there's actually an easier way of doing it. If you have access to a smartphone, say your mom or dad's Android phone or iPhone or an older siblings, or if you have your own iPod, you can go to the app stores and download free um, astronomy applications. Uh, I think there's ones like um, Starfinder, Star Chart, something like that. There's numerous ones you can download for free. And usually within the apps, they have a constellation option where it will show you the shape of the constellations up at the sky. So all you have to do is take your phone, point it at the sky, and it will show you the names of the stars and the constellations. So if you guys could do that, that would be great, and it uh, would be a great outdoor learning experience. Okay, so you more or less need to do this to answer most of the communicate questions on this one. So question one, what uh, questions do you have about the constellations that other groups made? Well, since we can't do our group class work, uh, if you can have a conversation with a sibling who's in our class or another student in our class, or maybe have a chat at lunchtime or during a break, uh, that'd be a great time to do it to maybe talk about some of the constellations you found. Uh, number two, design a constellation of your own on paper create a myth or legend to explain how your constellation got its name and how it got into the sky now this is a great creative writing opportunity uh, i would if you did this question i would love to see it uh, what would be even cooler is if you recorded yourself telling the story or legend you created about your constellation uh, we could uh, do that on movie maker or adobe premiere elements and I'd love to see your video. And if you would be up to it, I'd love to post that on Seesaw. Okay, question number three is another one you can do uh, very easily. Uh, research a different constellation, draw the constellation, and write about how it got its name. Present your constellation to your classmates. Um, you can go on Wikipedia and numerous websites to research about various constellations. Uh, you can do this very, very quickly. Um, I wouldn't expect more than a paragraph at most for this. We want to keep this really short. We don't want to turn it into a large report. Okay, number four is a very important one uh, in our history of navigation. How might one constellation help you find and know another? So quite often when we're familiar with the night sky, we can identify different constellations and we know what ones are in the general area. Now, knowing certain constellations has been very important for navigation for centuries. Um, one of the most commonly used constellations is the Big Dipper. Uh, pardon me if I pronounce the names of the stars wrong, but if you take a look at the Big Dipper, there's two stars on the edge of the pan, I guess you could say, of the Big Dipper called uh, I believe it's Duby and, Mer and Merrick. Uh, those two stars, they line up and point at Polaris, which we commonly know as the North Star. The North Star has been vital for centuries for navigation on the sea. I'll pause the video right now, uh, or my recording of the video, and I'll show you a picture of uh, how to find the North Star. Okay, uh, you can see from those two different pictures uh, that uh, the Big Dipper is used to locate North Star, also known as Polaris. Now, uh, I showed two different pictures because the Big Dipper will look a little bit differently depending on the time of night you look at it, and it uh, will slightly change uh, based on the season as well. Now, the North Star got its name because from our perspective on Earth, that star is always located in the north. Like you have to remember, the earth is 
moving around the sun, but we're also spinning every day as well. So that is one star that's in the same spot wherever we're looking at, at, at looking at it from the northern hemisphere. So it was tr absolutely vital for our uh, navigation on sea and on land. Okay, so the next question is um, number five. Why do you think astronomy is considered a part of science while astrology is not? Okay, so astronomy is the study of space, essentially. Astrology is a bunch of phony baloney. So you might have seen um, in a newspaper or on a website uh, horoscopes. Okay, horoscopes are a phony baloney garbage belief where people believe their lives are determined depending on how the stars aligned and what stars and what constellations they were born on. So if uh, someone is telling you something about their horoscope and their day and the predictions and that, just shake your head and nod and smile and don't get them going on about it anymore. <laughs> 